So I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's been seeing these forward deployed engineering positions popping up everywhere on LinkedIn recently. And I instinctively try to dig deep, understand it and share it with you so that you can decide whether this is something for you or not. And obviously I'm gonna give my personal opinion on where this whole thing is going. Huge kudos to Gurgly, by the way, for this amazing content. Check out his The Pragmatic Engineering blog, really interesting articles. But long story short, a forward deployed engineer is sitting between three different disciplines, a software engineer, platform engineer, and solutions architect. And I would also add the fourth one, which is sales. You heard me right, hang on, I'm gonna explain why. So what is a forward deployed engineer? Long story short, you do need to have some software engineering skills, meaning you do need to know how to program basically. But the good thing is you don't have to be a senior for this. So this is not a purely senior position. You can actually be a forward deployed engineer while having very little experience as well, as long as you have the rest of the uh, skills covered. So a lot of startups are gonna be using forward deployed engineers to help them win customers. Basically when a customer is undecided whether they can effectively use a product that your startup is offering, sales offers to provide an FTE to help them successfully integrate it. Listen carefully. An open AI advert says, as an FTE, you'll embed with customers, understand their domain and co-develop solutions to tackle real problems in often undefined or evolving problem services. What does that mean for us developers? Basically, those times where you're a simple software developer sitting in front of your computer and coding, doing NPM install is long gone, right? This is all automated pretty much. There's no need for typical software developers who spend the whole day in front of the computers. Nowadays, the forward deployed engineers are people who are actually going out to the customers of your employer and try to embed these solutions, try to help them build upon the solution that your company is offering. Let's keep reading. It's pretty standard that the job involves traveling to customers to sit alongside them a few times. Palantir expects around 25% of commute. Commuter estimates up to 50%. So basically there's a lot of commuting, just like I said, in a sales position. For businesses that work with unusual customers, this can involve working in harder to access work environments. For example, industrial AI service Meta expects FDEs to scope out solutions on the factory floor. I mean, it's kind of interesting. I don't think any software developer has been in this situation before, uh, but forward deployed engineers are the people for this. Also, let's keep reading. Linda expects FDEs to help customers build and maintain their no-code workflows while serving as their technical consultant. Let's admit the line is still blurry, okay? Are you a consultant? Are you a software developer? Are you a salesperson? Not clear. Some put emphasis on FDEs closing sales pipelines, others on assisting customers, and some focus on contributing to the core product. All right, it's not perfect. We'll keep it at that. Really good summary. FDEs responsibilities look similar to those of a startup CEO. You'll work in a small team, and own end-to-end -end execution of high stakes projects. Now, this is again the graph, but let's talk about the origins where of the E thingy is coming from. So forward deployed software engineer role was created at data mining giant Palantir in early 2010. So it's kind of an old role and back then it was called Delta. So Palantir has been deploying this role for a long time with many of their customers. So one of their, Employee says, for example, we work with manufacturers who want to reduce the number of defective products coming off the assembly line, right, in a factory. To move the needle on that metric, a Delta or a forward deployed engineer uses Palantir's products, a variety of languages, open source tooling, and industry standing standard building tools and their own creativity to devise a solution. Basically, you're sent to a customer by Palantir you have all the tools that Palantir has in their in this portfolio and you have to craft a solution for that customer. You can think of a dev focus as one capability many customers, this is what traditional devs are, while an FTEs or Delta's focus is one customer, many capabilities, meaning you can use the whole portfolio of your company. As mentioned, FTEs also contribute to core product. 
when there's a capability missing that a customer needs, the FDA can do the dev work of adding features and improvements to Palantir's product. How does it look? I tried to make a little sketch. So you have an employer, this is you, and employer has products. So let's say uh, the employer sells the product to the customer. Customer needs help integrating this product, mostly AI products, right? So FDA, you are gonna go to the customer, you're gonna be working on this product, trying to integrate. If you notice that there's some way of improving this, you're actually going to report back to your employer and say, hey, I, a customer needed this new feature that's lacking. So you're gonna actually contribute to the core product and then uh, bring it back to the customer and try to improve it, all right? So this is pretty much what's being said here. So a day-to-day -day work as an FTE would look like the following. Uh, most weeks I spend a couple of days working at the customer premises, some of the time in the meetings with technical or business stakeholders, and the rest of the time monitoring, debugging, basically still at the customer's premises. Back in the office, I spend some time writing minor code changes, as you saw on the graph, reviewing pull requests and researching planning customer solutions. And last but not least, why do we even need FTEs? All right, this is the last question, and I think this is gonna answer a lot of your questions whether you, you should become one or not. Startups are nimble. They employ devs who are usually open to experimentation and don't mind hacking solutions together. But large enterprises are often the opposite, where getting things done is less about technology challenges than bureaucracy. And not my job mindset gets in the way of a lot of products. By sending in empowered engineers whose mission is to integrate Palantir software in a way that delivers customer value, Palantir kills two birds with one stone. They don't need to worry about much about internal bureaucracy when they can blissfully unaware, and because devs are pretty much blissfully unaware of those bureaucracies, they are working with the customers. And they need to send a startup-minded dev for the integration with a mindset of how can I get the work done? So in this AI era where everything's gonna be automated pretty much in the fi next five years and nobody knows how our industry is gonna look like, um, there's one thing for sure, we're gonna be working on a meta level, so more like architecture. That's why make sure you subscribe to my channel and follow the content because this is exactly what I make videos about. And also we're gonna be needing numble and flexible engineers who don't only know how to code, but are also willing to travel, understand the domain and work closely with customers. This is pretty much what I get from this article and from what a front end uh, forward deployed engineer is. And I have a feeling that every developer or every engineer in the future is actually going to be a forward deployed engineer because most of the coding is gonna be automated and now we have so much time to use what are we gonna use it for? We're gonna be using it for our customers or working together with our customers in order to bring the products that have been automated by our AI agents into the customer's portfolio and improve it. I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know what you think about all this thing. I'm still curious and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.